Hello, I'm back. <laughs> Happy Thursday. It's been such a windy day here in Helsinki, but sunny, but a lot of movement. I'm super excited to be going, um, having a conversation soon with a, a very special guest. Hey, Glenn, how are you? <laughs> how are you, my darling Glenn? Are you good? Hi, everyone joining. How's it going? <clears throat> Hi, how has your week been? Mm. You're amazing. That's amazing to hear missing you. I'm missing you too. I really am. It was so nice to see you the other week or month um, at um, Athenium. Give a big hug to my dear Glenn. Um, so yeah, while we wait for our guest for the evening, you can maybe just let me know how you are. <laughs> wisdom teeth coming out and knocking wisdom out of, oh wow, I feel you, I can so empathize. But do you have nicer uh, drugs at least? <laughs> I remember when mine came out. Was it codeine at the time? I'm very excited. I got my official Black Lives Matter sweatshirt from the official shop, the official organization. Where's Vishnu? Vishnu, if you're on, please send a request to join. If you're on, hi everyone. We're just waiting for Vishnu to join. Ibuprofen to the limit. Okay, is that enough for you? I hope so. Getting what you need at this time. Well, while we wait for Vishnu to join, um, how are you enjoying the seasonal transition? Because it's definitely autumn now, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. What are your little self-care September tips and tricks to keep things afloat? Yay, here she is. Hi, Vishnu. Okay, I'm happy to hear that, Donna. Okay, um, so Vishnu just sent a request, so let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, go live with her. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Hi, Vishnu. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I'm okay. That was the polite answer. I'm well, and the general one. Uh, the real one is that I'm also extremely tired because <laughs> I've been with my kids like uh, on my own for the past week. So I'm definitely feeling. And having said that, I'm very excited to have this conversation with you. <laughs> nice, yes, happy to be here. I took a small nap. Great, yeah. just now. Yeah, like about for about fifteen minutes. Oh, sounds lovely. I think I need. I did that. I I, I took a little rest too before I went to pick them up, and it was nice. I was watching the leaves blowing in the wind and thinking and feeling very cozy and safe and protected indoors. So that was nice. <laughs> All right. So welcome, everybody. I'm so happy you're here. Welcome, Vishnu. I'm so happy you're here. Before we uh, dive into the conversation, um, and before I read uh, Vishnu, your documentary, which is awesome, by the way, and now I have, okay, there we go. I would love if you are open, if you can just um, sit and um, remember we are embodied beings and if the breath is available, we might just breathe consciously for a few rounds. Is that something you're open to doing with me? Sure. Yeah. Is that something everyone else is open to doing? I'm just going to take that as a yes. Would you like me to guide it with you or would you like to guide it? 
please guide okay. it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, if folks, um, wherever you are, wherever you find yourselves, if you can just settle yourselves into a comfortable way to be. So you might sit, you might lie down. Uh, you might walk mindfully. And just, uh, I invite you to take a moment to feel the sensations, notice the sensations in your body, the temperature in the skin, um, the feeling of whatever clothing you have on, the textures of that. And in particular, you might really notice where your body is making contact with the floor or the chair or the seat. And noticing the contact, the sense of being grounded and making connection with this earth element, the stability. And if it's possible for you, you might close the eyes for a little bit more inward focus. And if the inward focus is not nourishing, you might just look around the room, the space. This is orienting yourself to your surroundings. Just gently taking in color, shape, designs, textures. Sometimes it's not always available to close the eyes like right away. And if you're able to be with the breath, I invite us to take three rounds of inhale and exhale, just using the rhythm of your own breathing. Once you've finished the last exhalation, if your eyes have been closed, you might open them and join our little community here in this digital space. It doesn't make it any less real. <laughs> so welcome, Vishnu. I'm so excited to have you here and get into this conversation today. Before I, uh, we get started, I'd love to read your bio, just so folks uh, get a sense of who you are. So I'll do that now. Okay, so Vishnu Vardhani, born and raised in Hyderabad, India, is a body philosopher and performance artist based in Helsinki. A hyphenated identity, multidisciplinary practices, building connections between art, science, witchcraft, history, and cultures define her. Vishnu explores shame, love, through dance, acting, and stand-up comedy, oscillating between cultures, methodologies, and sexual identities, each, dif each different from the other are instrumental in her visual language. Her everyday practice is rooted in an ongoing investigation of sensory experience. Sleep, conflict, nutrition are her research interests. Night politics, conflict, and food are recurring themes in her work. Twerking and napping in public spaces are Vishnu's whatchamacallits for everyday activism. Vishnu's persona, Vamp Master Brown, is the first Indian drag king in Helsinki. Awesome. 
She intends to blend her love of cinema, passion for filmmaking with her ongoing practices to achieve a new language in storytelling. She aims to embody the depth and breadth of affect theory. You'll have to uh, let me know what that is. That's new for me. She's currently rereading Pleasure Activism. I've heard so much good about that book. Reading uh, Xenogenesis toward a black femi feminist poetics by Denise Ferreira da Silva and Imperialism, Orientalism and Social Emancipation by Vivek Chiber, Chiber with a reading circle. Vishnu has been very proudly bastardizing yoga practice since 2005. Yes. <laughs> That's such an amazing bio. <laughs> Thank you. So welcome, welcome. How are you today? Like, how is your heart? Yeah, if right you now I'm feeling like at what you say? Just super relaxed and looking forward to what is uh, our um, time together. And this conversation might uh, surface. And yeah, I'm actually like in a big place of curiosity on what you want to explore. Mm, mm. I mean, we've been, we've been talking and having sort of various conversations on WhatsApp and in person as well, just around uh, different topics around, mainly around yoga, spirituality um, in the current kind of uh, global environment. And, you know, as a, as a practitioner of, of yoga, um, I've learned it from a very specific place, um, South Asian teachers. I feel that there are certain um, topics that, uh, of course, affect me and that I'm kind of involved in co-creating. But as a non-native South Asian, um, I don't always feel like um, it's my place to speak on them. <clears throat> and so that was initially my, my um, sort of intention was to be able to, to get into certain conversations uh, with you, who is a, a native of um, India and who is practicing yoga and all the various roles um, you have. I just thought it would be a very interesting and rich thing that we could do. So that was the, the motivation behind this. And the fact that you're, you're uh, can you see me and hear me Vishnu? The connection is a little bit blurred. Are you still with us? Oh, oh. hello. Oh no, I think it froze. Hello, Vishnu, can you see? Hi. How about now? Oh, ha okay. Ah, uh, yeah. That's, Is it back? That's a bit better. Yes, that's a bit okay. better. Okay. Yes, <laughs> awesome. I think I missed a small bit, uh, mm. but I think I kind of clue in on um, if this is a question, uh, was there a question or you just want to make that as our foundation for the conversation? Um, perhaps we can make it as a foundation to the conversations and the questions will come from where we're going. The mm -hmm. main, my main uh, idea is I want to a little bit step out of the way and just listen <laughs> and uh, hear your point of view. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. So I just come in the spirit of uh, receptivity and learning. <laughs> um, yeah. But questions will come up, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can start with uh, your query on what effect theory could be. Mm. And um, I'm going a bit into um, 
responsibilities of hindus in the current times of like hindutva and how to not um, bring forth similar challenges the world across is facing on like how certain things are just appropriated and culturized uh, and somehow presented as this one truth mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and like for me as um so as i was saying that i have been bastardizing yoga and when i'm saying this uh right from like how i have come to encounter yoga to right now how i practice it i never had um i know i know an original idea of what yoga was um or that i didn't start off learning yoga as some kind of like yoga sutras and like patanjali and so on so for me it has been about something that was transmitted to me by a teacher and she actually was an anglo indian and it's quite an interesting thing because i never thought of yoga as a hindu thing um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so um, even i had to like inform myself on okay how is this like um the things that get carried out or like when they are out of their context and yes. simplified yeah. the dangers of that um and i started to encounter them in finland and yeah. when i started to notice okay you know there is um like someone when i first um was looking for a job in finland like someone actually said oh you can give yoga uh, lessons there's a lot of money there and in my head okay. these two don't connect at all Mm, mm, because mm, yoga mm. and yogic ways of being and especially doing karma yoga or as i offered services they were like doing your uh, like offering your labor is yeah. kind of like voluntary you know you do this because you are able and you are capable so right. to me to like connect these two it took me a long time and right now i do make um, money with yoga but it mm. it never um, i mean i i still am in conflict with that on like how much do i charge um, cuz i went all the way up to 15 euros per hour but now i went back to 10 euros and then when i look back at like okay how much uh, like if i want to go and take yoga lessons it's always like a challenge for me on like i can't afford this you know mm. so mm. thinking in terms of that so like the mm, and that's why i call it bastardizing because i never knew that it came with the tags of uh, such strong religious and econo- or um religious language in its native context and then when it left india that it had like such an economic uh um, tag attached to it and both of them are somehow i i cannot welcome them mm mm, mm, mm. yeah no it's uh, it's the that's uh, the certainly the religious context is something i'd like uh, for you to speak more on since it's something that uh, uh you have that like the insider perspective so to speak um certainly the economic context is i mean <laughs> it's what we are is floating around as like known as the yoga industrial complex mm-hmm. where you see capitalism and essentially like um mm, dominant group um dynamics um mm-hmm. interplay together um <clears throat> and it's i mean yeah it's a it's a tricky thing because you know i come from a household that you know that is the livelihood like that's how we eat uh, is is through it and so 
the um, pricing and the economics of it is, um, yeah, it's a tricky one. Um, and something that we are, when we talk about, you know, who is able to come to um, yoga, wellness, spiritual spaces, and who is not, and we look at the um, um, exclusionary economics of it, um, it's certainly something that absolutely uh, needs to be um, thought out in a very um, considerate way. Mm. Uh, and so, can you perhaps, um, another thing we wanted to talk about is, um, and maybe we'll, we'll kind of get to that naturally, but uh, it was about the subversion of yoga. I'm very curious to, to ask, and we've been discussing this, what is it about yoga um, that needs to be subverted and why? Um, yeah, like, especially for me, you know, when um, I'm looking back at, like, how people have been learning yoga, or how people have been um, transmitting yoga, and how it traveled, um, like, it's travel uh, transcontinental voyage of yoga, to me, it's like, you know, there is this uh, idea of jati, which is like, fetishized idea of blood and kinship and then um, yoga has been like within families and it somehow uh, gets transmitted from father to son you know if you look at um, BKS Iyengar and then his son and so on and then outside it has become like a fetishized culture like it's Yes. There are yoga clothes, yoga shops, <laughs> and yes. then the um, how do you how do you uh, de fetishize or like you know just go away from this uh, culturization, which is all the time happening anyways of caste outside of India. You know, like the practices of. Um, uh, um, uh, the way uh, um, how do you call this like vegan uh, ideas and uh, it, it's like it's to me it's very complex and this enmeshed um, um, trauma that still yoga has for example um, it it somehow created this kind of like a monolith or, or like a single idea of like who does yoga and how it's practiced and therefore it doesn't have space for things i mean it's coming more and more but at the same time there yeah. is uh, like you know yoga still needs a lot of decolonization because it's it's so deeply colonized, recolonized, you know, like the, uh, if you look back at uh, how animal eating had started because of colonization, and then um, the whole white veganism on the world, and then how it again, like, causes a big blanket on um on this yogic practices and especially i'm talking about like how it's practiced in helsinki to me it's very um it's it's extremely colonized recolonized mm. and uh unipurpose um mm. and then constantly fetishizing so mm. yeah how do you how do you step away yeah. from it and therefore like to queer it up further um what does it how does i mean how would it look you know like if you look back into uh or there is this uh all the poisonous leaders of the world currently think of like how to make a certain country great again but like in retrospect uh there is a lot to learn from but we 
never actually go there and mm-hmm. um and i'm also thinking of like afro futurisms for example or oriental futurisms that bring a lot of idea on like what do we actually want from our future and mm, a lot is coming uh, also with like for example um we are transitioning and adopting and yet we want some things to be pure you know the idea of good the idea of what is great or um, like if you're looking at feminist perspectives like the idea of a good uh, woman or you know all these are coming with a lot of traumas and then how to de-traumatize these um um ideas and thoughts and especially yoga can be a very strong tool and however it's being weaponized and mm. sometimes like for example in the beginning of my uh teaching and my part in 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 yoga i didn't even realize that i'm accidentally passing on a wrong weapon you know and it's unintentional but now i come into my practice with a lot of um uh, consciousness and i'm very aware that i don't want to also engage with it um with a capital like white capitalist um model yeah like not go there with a white mm. capitalist approach <laughs> do you get me yeah thank you no that was the, that, that there's so much we can unpack in in what you said um and i i do agree like i think that we are on the cusp of becoming a more trauma conscious society mm-hmm. um and I, I, you know so much of what you said resonated with me because i feel like on my like uh, yoga journey as well um in hindsight i can look back now thanks sadie um i can look back now and be like oh yeah i i had kind of like internalized things that were taught to me and was unconsciously passing on stuff that um hadn't been really like <laughs> that didn't really like break it down or look at it through some kind of like critical lens and really understand like what 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 is this about and um I mean and and certainly as well the um, something you've mentioned about things being um like having a kind of single a single story or um what Chima Manda Dicci says it's you know the danger of a single narrative I certainly can recognize that now um in the in the way that 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 the yoga had been transmitted to me um and why is that like what what is the need for cultural hegemony like um and i certainly feel like globally um for so many there's almost like a a security like in things being culturally homogenous i mean for those who benefit from it obviously not from those who carry multiple vulnerable identities but i guess um and as well the fact that uh I love that you mentioned afrofuturism and oriental futurism as well because this to me is about dreaming how things might be like what is it that we are wishing for and rather than um trying to react or even respond against something like it's clear like what I don't want around but is there enough um space in the mind and the heart to dream and to kind of like create what it is we might wish to see um and this is a question i've been asking um folks um when you're sort of like dreaming or doing your everyday activism you've mentioned engaging in yoga outside of the white capitalist model do you have a sense of what it is that you you sort of do mm. want to see within the the yoga spaces or just in in a more general sense um yeah i mean futurisms and speculative fantasies like to me uh what i'm really wishing for is like you know the people that are having more and more more access to um certain countries 
that are actually going through a lot of environmental crisis and mm. you know like if you think of karma yoga uh, mm. and anthropocene like when you're juxtaposing and then many many people that travel like for example to india to himalayas these great mountains and then the people that go there like for example i can tell you the direct impact of um a, a certain gaze upon uh yogic spaces and yoga that is becoming like this kind of mind field regions that are constantly being gentrified because uh mm. of this the immediate impacts are that certain kinds of meat is uh banned for the regions and like there is a, mm. um, i uh, have you heard about this like you know uh i'm not but it uh, makes sense yeah in the northeast india now there has been a ban on like dog meat okay. and uh i mean i'm i am not even promoting like eat a meat eat some right. meat but like you know right. there are, there are indigenous practices and uh like actually i can't even go uh, into that space but like i directly see the impacts of it and then thinking back at like for example thailand it's just going through so much um environmental issues or like when you look at taiwan and the surfing and the surf community and yoga community go to taiwan totally engage with the space and at the same time neglect local practices like i heard of like people that uh don't go into waters uh mm. during certain seasons and then there are surfers and yogi um like yoga practitioners in these spaces and somehow completely neglecting um even to engage with you know the local and yeah, yeah. and indonesia as well like many many uh, stories that come out that like have this you know like indonesia that also has uh, islamic practices there so to me this feels like okay how yeah. how can we really think about yoga as activism you know this right. is this is what i'm thinking in terms of like futurisms like i really don't want to go back or like look at what it can uh, what it has been but mm. what all it can be is very interesting mm. to me and um because it really has a lot a lot of uh, because you guys also giving you tools on like how to not go into a space of choking um do you know this um i mean in um uh, like how to overcome anxiety and like yeah. it brings a lot of good things especially thinking in terms of mental health but then Ooh. if you don't look at it as you know that you're part of something global then you're again detaching yourself from yeah. what it is as practice and then bringing back same trauma so mm. yeah those mm. those are uh what i truly wish for and like where um yoga as activism can go and like for example us that are uh informing ourselves can like just in small ways pollinate um spaces around us and like uh for example i i do this thing of like while the initial med- meditation before i go into my practice the first 3 minutes i talk about uh what um uh what has yoga been and where it can go and then pick up on news like especially within yogi communities where like people in thailand xyz um and also not fall in the trap of you know toxic positivity on like let's this one hour is going to be great yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. leave feeling yeah. good versus yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm, 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 mm. i mean there's so many ways and and words like you use like you know things can get weaponized and things can be used in a way where we can bypass the work we need to do around shame and around trauma both 
self and collective, depending on, you know, kind of which part of the region of the world and which kind of collective body one um, has found themselves born into or identifies at. Um, and I mean, and I, it, it, it's having these, when we talk about these, these conversations, I think it's also, um, I don't think it's a new thing um, or do you think it's a new thing of yoga as activism? That doesn't feel like a particularly new concept to me. Um, and uh, what do you think about that? Because <laughs> I, 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 it survived for so long. It survived millennia. And so this kind of like indigenous wisdom um, I get the sense that in order for it to have survived so long, it's needed to be relevant for the kind of like ebb and flow of human evolution and human strife and struggle throughout all these millennia. So um, do you feel that this like yoga and activism is a, is a new thing or is it, is it a, an old one? Mm. So uh, as a body philosopher, I have to like go into that space of uh, critical engagement with like activism and nothing about human beings and our thoughts and whatever we do is new. No, it's not. Uh, there has always been protest. There, is, there has always been questioning. However, for me, how I read activism and how I want to uh, open up uh, to you is really what is the action of time? What is important right now to speak about? Like for me, I feel like not, uh, yeah, you, I don't, I mean, I don't uh, know much about like how accessible yoga spaces in Helsinki are, but the mm -hmm. few spaces that I have been to feel like very inaccessible in that way that it's not a space where friends of mine with a wheelchair can come there. Like mm. if, you mm. know, like partner yoga and then, so to me it feels like this is not activism enough. Mm. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, I agree, I agree. And one question I set out to begin to answer was who is uh, not showing up in these healing spaces and why? Um, and certainly the issue, uh, and again, this goes back to the fact that we are just on the cusp of, of becoming a more, and this is on a hopeful day, not on an everyday thing, a more trauma conscious society where we don't even like it. Be, these kinds of things are not normalized yet um, in terms of, of, of sharing this information of like, yes, is the venue wheelchair accessible? Certainly in places like the US where, um, public transportation is not as dependable as here in Finland, being able to let people know like uh, if you need to take public transport or you need a car to get to a certain venue, because that's going to determine who's going to be able to access these spaces. So absolutely, I agree. A lot of work still needs to be done um, around the language of accessibility and the accessibility itself. Uh, okay. Deepika was wanting us to share about Kemet yoga and it being the original question mark yoga rather than that which comes of India or from India. I would love to get into that conversation, Deepika, but I think that's going to be for another day. And certainly I'm very curious about the African um, uh, indigenous wisdom practices that look remarkably similar to some of these Hatha yoga asanas, but um, I personally have not... Um, done enough research on Kemet Yoga to speak on it right now. Mm. Um, hi, Sasha. Hi, Paloma. Hi, welcome, everyone. Um, do you, are you familiar with, with, with Kemet Yoga at all? Um, Vishnu, is this something that <laughs> has sort of, <laughs> like, uh, you know, just... I, um, as I believe very strongly that a world across, like, for example, um, uh, the Black Panther movement, it also 
uh, went like you know it made its way out, and there has been like a Dalit Panther movement. And I Dalit know, Panther, I've read, I've heard. Like it was what was it? Um, uh, Bitha did a podcast on uh, one uh, woman who was having something to do with the the. Uh, I don't quite remember her role, but I I learned about the Dalit Panther Party from her and yeah. the poetry. Oh my goodness! I have goodness. to read. I have to listen. It was a good episode. I really recommend it. Like I learned a lot, and I was super happy to hear this solidarity. Like um, yeah, oh, okay. anyway. <laughs> yeah, and somehow like um, I mean, how can we trace genealogies of uh, certain practices? I mean, I was not born, you know, like. and yeah. uh, in this so and world was a very different place before and we don't know where something started yeah. but like you know going yeah. into the questions of where it started or like which is uh, the real origin of something beats yeah uh, where it can go and therefore like i'm more curious about learning from what uh, like looking back and thinking okay what not to do mm, <laughs> and where mm. this can go to me this is more important than like okay where exactly did it start then we again go back into that question of like okay the first uh yeah. human yeah. being is of a certain like you know there is an idea of like oh it was a first person the chicken or egg and all these uh questions Mm, so i definitely respect where it, wherever it's coming from and uh, at face value i will even submit to uh, it may be coming from uh, like african nations to me it's not surprising uh, absolutely not and i mean this is something that colonial colonialism has stripped from folks of the african continent is the fact that uh, we are an indigenous huge uh people you know what i'm saying and we have these indigenous wisdom and indigenous knowledge that has just kind of been stripped and robbed from us and in fact i don't know if we talked about this before um vishnu but you know my uh, you know my i was born in kenya so i i i know like the place where my people come from central kenya um one of my family members on my father's side my paternal side which is the kenyan side was a kikuyu traditional medicine man a, a folk healer and i always like i'm always asking my parents the same questions like wishing and hoping i could get a different response which is like what were what were his practices and like who is still kind of like the holder of this of this um traditional wisdom this indigenous wisdom and sadly because of christianity and the colonialism of religion all that was wiped was wiped clean and um somehow i think this was why yoga felt like a return to something yeah um and why i i began to engage in it because it's the way i could access what is already existing within this like indigenous memory of some kind of like art and science to being a human in the world um and at the same time yeah i definitely mourn being um uh, robbed of 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 that like very particular like information and of course there's books and i could read and uh yes <laughs> i could do that and i will <laughs> at some point there was also um a conversation around like where is uh, uh maryam abdul karim was talking about like samosa and uh you know like there is an immediate um affinity to somehow um assume something it being from like your region but like what was our region before the times of the borders like you know so to me this like you know the large, the idea of mohenjodaro the first civilizations like when you look back how was how was the cartography like i mean to me this is such a um 
Yeah, I'm now um, looking for words, but like thinking of like world map and thinking of like, wow, imagine at one point this was all one nation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and even, yeah. And the way, uh, I mean, when we look back at like, for example, being in Sami land now, look back at like the traces of how the Sami navigated uh, Russia, Finland, Sweden, mm. Norway, and so on. Um, and then looking back at like, for example, the Kurdi uh, people. So, or there are people who um, I met uh, in Lapland who were talking about like, we are from India. And then I'm like, wow, that's quite interesting because I, I um, you know, the immediate prejudice kicks in and I'm like, how, how is this person from India? But then yeah. to understand like, you know, this is the language that we had before, um, uh, before borders, before uh, yeah. the idea of like creating proper cartographies and I yeah. thinking Nation of like States. where all Africa could be. I mean, for people like uh, teenagers with no papers that were coming to Finland and um, something that I was able to teach right away was yoga and mm -hmm. uh, I was like convincing everyone, come, it's going to be fun. We are going to do headstands and inversions. And uh, then someone said like, oh, you're trying to convert us. Because some people had left their countries because of like religious impositions. Uh, and to me, this clicked something also. And it's something that uh, enriched my practice on like what not to say at the end of the class. Mm -hmm like mm. thinking of Shanti Mantra, but like thinking of, you know, like Om being a Hindu, uh, yeah. like it somehow has such a Hindu thing, but in some way, uh, theater and actors and voice uh, practitioners have like totally appropriated it and bastardized it. Therefore, like mm. you also have other ways of using, like vocalizing, okay home and somehow making it into like ah uh, ooh the just the yeah. tonalities yeah. of it and right. so like I really had to think about like my god what puts me off like especially um, when I'm in hippie context like this <laughs> like to me uh, or like you know um hippie but also like very contact like you know the kind of hippies that think that ohm is the coolest thing and it like does a lot but like not being able to see what it's again mm, it's not transgressive like it's just very the it doesn't transcend the mm. idea of what it should be transcending <laughs> so yeah yeah, this wow. is the anecdote yeah. I was thinking about. And yeah, thank you for sharing. Thank you for truly really feel that it's it's um a practice that you really need to be a, have a body and breath in the body, and then the <laughs> it can be accessed. And so I'm also very much like uh, sort of navigating these questions of like when is mantra going to be exclusionary and when is it, you know, so I'm glad you brought up that anecdote because that was really helpful. Yeah. We are, we are, I can't believe how fast the time has gone. I, we have still some time, but I just did want to just, because uh, Instagram kicks us off in an hour, but we started a little bit after six, so we're still uh, doing well. If I might be able to um, ask you, and you can totally also say, no, I don't want to. Um, but since it's something we've been talking about previously, um, Hinduism uh, in this time of Hindutva, how are you sitting and moving and ne negotiating and navigating this um, particular um, time? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, 
it's it's like it's very awkward somehow um i'm extremely sad because i took a lot of pride uh all my life of mm. uh coming from the context where i ha- like you know i'm coming from a city that truly is uh like you know this multi religious multi cultural mm. like my city is is something like i really loved loved my city hyderabad and uh coming from there and no one even asks this question of like you know um, i i mean i i don't know uh where people ask but there is like an immediate uh for the questions that you still receive 2020 like i was in india um in march and people ask are you what's your name are you married what's your religion but because my name is vishnu it's so like my somehow my hinduness is evident already in my name and then people okay. ask if i practice my religion yeah. and and i was looking back like there is a big beef ban but in my in my city you can still find beef and okay. so i was like looking finding details like this and thinking okay what is it that's possible in hyderabad that is more and more impossible in other cities and other parts of india like it's also because it's in the south uh telangana chief minister is is um, yeah he's he's not <laughs> uh he's a good person <laughs> let's say that uh there are many challenges but like to to be hindu and navigating hinduism uh from how i come is like truly being totally like informed and then uh proximity to many other religions and cultures you know like that really brings because opaqueness and lack of transparency and then idea of like what is what is it that's constantly being fed to you there is a lot of um, uh, fake news and if you just switch channel like you know the neighboring state is extremely anti like it's it's really scary to like look at wow in this city everyone feels safe yeah but then you step out of this city and then everyone talks about like oh my god it's dangerous or there are also ideas of like how dangerous my city could be and mm. it's it's i mean yeah i i don't know if i responded to your question but uh right now i'm i'm extremely saddened with how many things are constantly being taken away and then experiencing this lack right. of agency you know like uh um, yeah ha- yeah and if if something has become a political tool yeah then i really don't want to engage with that like you know my act, my activism mm-hmm. or like is actually yeah. to say okay fuck hinduism and being able to say it online i'm really scared actually i was thinking about like oh my god when i say bastardizing yoga how would it and you know like when something is online and it's forever i'm also afraid of mm, what are the repercussions and especially like within my family what are they going to say and you know there's a lot of control so it's all it's these are things that it's i stay with yeah Yeah. and also it's mm-hmm. like and i mean you are mixed race so you kind of know on like how um uh, how is it to like find your allies and like i wish to like look at myself and think yeah i'm hindu but why why should that even be a question and no. i do no. practice yoga but why why should that hinder anything that we could uh do together and so um, and people that are sensitive and aware are always um 
yeah like i mean there is space to have this conversation and when uh, there is a pre prejudice then uh, then <laughs> yeah i wish them luck <laughs> Thank you so much for that vulnerable share. Um I really appreciate it. Um and just the the bravery you showed just to really share and and yeah. We could also like just <laughs> we this doesn't have to live forever. I mean, I would like it because I think it gives value <laughs> for folks. <laughs> But you can just give me your consent like it can also be something that you know it was a nice moment in time yeah um, thank you yeah no i'm i'm so glad you said that because it's a tricky thing you know when we are looking at this current like um just this pattern of uh we have oh we can't get into it too much um so we'll just have to have it be another day a conversation for another day but i i really do appreciate you for sharing and being brave and authentic and vulnerable um in your response there's My so much pleasure. still we could get into but this is our time for today yeah Vishnu, thank, you thank you for this so conversation on wing i really appreciate it i feel like we just like touched the iceberg <laughs> and there's much more that we can get into <laughs> everyone thank you for joining um so when are you performing next in Helsinki but i guess with the pandemic it's sort of shifted gigs and things around are you doing anything online for people no matter where they are to be able to check you out thank you um, deepika nice to have you um my you, performance actually i'm performing uh or uh it's it's a non performance uh on at public on friday and saturday together with uh, joy Mar- maria ma smith and ima um and ida will be on this side um in helsinki and uh, jean one his week at publix nice i just put in your website for people to go find more information while you were saying that is it this weekend you're performing the uh, the next friday okay I won't be able to make it because I'm full of baby uh, children duties this month but I'll look at your website and try and get the next one because I've never actually seen you perform and I really want to. <laughs> uh yeah I think you can plug in via online. Cool. Okay Vishnu thank you so much. I don't want to get cut off. We have 5 mi- seconds so I'll talk to you very soon. Bye everyone. Take care. <laughs>